Can you fake a die roll with coins? It turns out that you can, not with magic, but with a bit of math. So, how do you fake a die roll with a coin? The way to look at it is as follows: a coin has two sides, and if it's a fair coin each time you toss it, either side will be equally likely to turn up. And so we can use two variables to represent the two sides. And now I pick zero and one. Now let's look at the die. Say we have a six-sided die. The six sides can be represented by the variables zero, one, two, three, four, and five. Clearly, on a die, we have one to six dots, but we'll soon see why labeling zero to five is more convenient. And the observation that we're going to make is as follows: If we're going to toss this coin five times, what's going to happen? Well, we can have all turning up zeros, or we can have all turning up one, or any number of ones in between. So. By tossing the coin five times, I can obtain any value from zero to five. And maybe this is how we would simulate a die with a coin. But let me show you why this is not a good idea. I have written a couple of programs. One is called four-sided. Basically, it uses that idea, tossing the coin three times, to obtain the values from zero to three. This program will make one million simulated throws. And here are the results. Now, you might spot something unusual. If you look at the percentage of throws that have the value zero, it's only twelve point five percent. Whereas, if you look at the percentage of two that show up, it's thirty-seven point four percent. This is hardly a fair die. It's biased towards one and two. A similar thing will happen if we use this to simulate a six-sided die. And what is the reason behind this uneven distribution? Well, the reason is as follows. See, look at the six-sided simulation. What we do is we toss the coin five times, right? So five times five coins. Now there's only one way to get zero. To get zero, you need all of these to be zero. Whereas to get two, there are many different ways to get two. For example. It can be the first two tosses, or the third and fourth, or the first and fourth, and so on. Tons of ways to obtain two. Same thing for three, and a little fewer for one because there are only five ways to get one. We must have one of these tosses to be one, and the rest zero. And now you see why it is biased towards two and three in the six-sided case. Because it's a lot easier to get two than zero. So how do we fix this? Believe it or not, we're going to fix this using binary numbers. Now, if you are like me when I was young, you might find binary numbers a bit dry. And binary numbers are actually quite awkward to work with by hand because very soon you'll be writing lots of digits for some relatively small numbers. But I hope that in the next few minutes you'll be convinced that binary numbers are actually very useful. So what we're going to do is we're going to take two coins, and we're going to throw these two coins. The possibilities of the throws are these. Now notice that each of these variables zero, one, two, three occurs exactly only once. And in fact, if you have say three coins. Then we can extend this to zero up to seven. If you look at these numbers, so if you look at this one, this is just the binary number for two, and this thing down here is the binary number for seven. In other words, if I have k coins, then I will be able to represent two to the k values in exactly one way. So, what this means is. If we have n fair coins, we can simulate a two to the n sided fair die. In other words, if we manage to have three coins, then I can simulate an x sided fair die. But now the question is, 
What about six-sided die? What we'll do is the following. Suppose that we have three coins. Well, three coins give us the values 0, 1 to 7. And since 6 and 7 exceed 5, we're going to take the remainders of these two numbers when divided by 6. So in essence, 6 is now a 0, and 7 is now a 1. So 0 is now twice as likely to occur as 2, and the same thing for 1. But we can improve things a bit if we take more coins. So suppose I'm going to take 6 coins. So 6 coins will give us values from 0 up to 63. Now, how many times will 0 appear as a remainder in this sequence of numbers when divided by 6? Well, 60 divided by 6 is 10, so there will be so there will be 11 occurrences of the 0 remainder. And 1, again, will be 11 as well. Now, you can see that 11 out of 64 times, you get 0. Whereas 10 out of 64 times, you get 4. The two are now quite close. And if we increase the number of coins, say to 10, we can do even better. With 10 coins, I get values from 0 to 1023. And if you look at the number of values in the sequence that will have a 0 remainder, what you'll get is 171, 171. And now, the chance of now the chance of zero turning up is 171 divided by 1024, whereas the chance of four turning up is 170 divided by 1024. And let's look at the two values in decimal. Okay, so 171 divided by 1024 is 0 0.16. 699 whereas 170 divided by 1024 is 0 0.16006156 and so on so the two are really really close and for most practical purposes that's good enough and of course if you want something even better just take more coins say 20 coins and the likelihood of each number turning up is almost the same across the board. What you see here is, if we increase the number of coins, we can get as close to a six-sided die as we can. Another way to say is, we can get asymptotically close to a six-sided die using this method. So here you go, turning coins into dice using a bit of mathematics, and it works like magic.